Hello, thanks for joining us today. I'm Mark Dixon, Oracle Enterprise Strategist. With me today is Ignacio Larrero, Oracle Vice President of IAS Named Enterprise. He will share his insight with us today. Welcome, Ignacio. Hi, Mark, how are you? I'm doing well. Today's discussion will be on disaster recovery and data protection in the cloud. We'll focus specifically on how Oracle Cloud Infrastructure is a fundamentally different approach, an enterprise approach of protecting data in the cloud. Ignacio, why is OCI, or Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, the ideal platform for backup and, and disaster recovery? Mark, Oracle spent 40 years, the last four decades, building enterprise software. Um, all of our R&D spend, and we're typically at the top of R&D spend for companies nationwide, and when you re-swizzle the list um, by revenue, we're all the way at the top, six, seven, or eight, uh, depending on the year. All of that money that we spend goes into enterprise workloads. We don't build rockets, we don't build consumer products, that's all we do. That's been our focus for 40 years, and it continues to be our focus. So when we were looking at taking those uh, applications, those SaaS applications, those PaaS applications, our database, that we have over 420,000 customers running, and moving that to the cloud, we realized something very quickly, that those infrastructures, those applications, that software is focused in running people's business, it's running enterprises. An enterprise level public cloud simply did not exist. So partnering somewhere just didn't make any sense. We had to build it. Our customers required it. There wasn't another choice. So we went out and we started from the ground up and we had a distinct advantage from other public clouds. We started late in the game uh, and that gave us a, a, a couple of advantages. One is we got to see what was happening in the public space, how things were scaling, what was working and what was not. So we took some of the things that worked and, and incorporated it into our space, but then we took the very unique requirements that our customers have for enterprises and developed that into the public space, into public cloud. So it's betting your business, your enterprise, on a public cloud that can actually support enterprise. That's correct, and focused on enterprise. And this is, this is very important, so I'll give you a couple of examples of what we do. So for example, in our public cloud, um, we encrypt everything. We encrypt everything at rest, we encrypt everything at transit, everything, 100%. But more importantly, not only do we encrypt it, we take those encryption keys and we turn them back over to our enterprise customers, so they manage it. So an enterprise can be confident that their data is secure and they are in control. That is correct. So those keys they own, they put them into their control, their governance, their processes, their run books, and they do with it exactly what they did in their enterprise, but only in the public cloud. So why does this make OCI the ideal platform for data protection and disaster recovery? So the encryption and the keys are one uh, good example. The other is that in an, uh, in an enterprise environment, um, speed is important and speed in public cloud is important, but more importantly for an enterprise is predictability. So you have to be fast, but you have to be predictably fast. And that's a very, 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 very big differentiator for enterprise. So for example, our network layer is a flat, non-blocking, fault-tolerant, off-box virtualized, fully API'd, uh, software-defined network. That sounds great, and there's a lot of technical terms in there. What that really means is that it's fast at six o'clock on Tuesday and one o'clock on Sunday and every minute in between. So if you take a look at, um, uh, at our latency rates across our entire network, not only are they very, very fast and very, very uh, comparable, if not better, to most public enterprises, they're probably equal to what you're used to in an enterprise space in non-public cloud. Mm -hmm. But the most important part about it is, if you look at the, the uh, latency graph chart for our public cloud network, is there's hardly any uh, peaks and valleys. I mean, it is flat, the patient is dead. Um, and it is, it is that way all the time. We do, the most important thing in that environment is we do not oversubscribe. Well, that's great. And so it's a great, fundamentally enterprise-focused platform now, the disaster recovery and data protection is not just about storing away your data in a vault, but actually using that in a more effective way, is that correct? 
Right, so, so yesterday um, and in the past, it was all about RPO and RTO. So I'm gonna take this data and I'm gonna find the best vault, as you said, uh, to put it in. And the evaluation was, you know, is this vault better than that vault? Is this vault easily accessible? Is that vault not? Do they encrypt this vault? Do they not? And it was all a bunch of stuff uh, revolving around RPO and RTO. And it was just getting my data somewhere and then the ability to get my data back and then restore it. And then there's some nuances about, you know, whether it's hot or cold or warm or, or other things. But that, that was the discussion layer. Data really is a new currency. And for today, that's just not enough. That's just step one. Um, step two is then what, what if I want to stand up that data somewhere else? And I want to do it very quickly, for example, in a cloud methodology. Um, if you take that data and you store it in a public cloud, one that's secure, one that you have encryption keys for, um, and now you want to recover it rather than bringing the data back, you want to stand up a compute instance in the cloud, you can do that in OCI, and it's very easy. And most importantly, you consume that in the elastic cloud way. So when you um, stand up that instance, you pay for it. When you don't, you don't. So it can grow with me, it can shrink if I need be, but it really meets my business needs. Right, and you can make those decisions um, not just for an overarching um, enterprise level um, uh, backup and protection strategy, you can make that decision workload by workload. So departmental workloads in HR might be different than compartmental workloads from the marketing. Inside of those uh, departments, you may have differing sets of workloads that you may want to have different structures for. So workload by workload, department by department, you can make those uh, differentiator calls and only consume and pay for what you use. And can Oracle Cloud Infrastructure handle non-Oracle workloads as well as Oracle workloads? It does. Because of that overriding network that we've built and because of those structures that we've built, it doesn't matter what's on there. So you can put Exadata, Oracle Cloud um, components on there. You can put regular Intel. Uh, you can put anything on our bare metal infrastructure that you have. You can run anything. And most importantly, and this is key for the enterprise, with your control and governance. That's great. Do you have an example of a customer who has adopted this approach and uh, allowed this to grow with them? Wow, we have so many customers. Um, uh, one customer in particular, we started with um, with a very fundamental um, uh, data set, 52 Oracle databases that they wanted to protect. Pretty easy, it was about 900 terabytes. Um, and we moved that in, into uh, OCI and we started protecting and streaming those. They quickly found out that it was very, very easy, very convenient, very fast, very reliable. So they started adding other data sets. We moved from 900 terabytes. Uh, we started a adding non-Oracle workloads. We moved up to about three petabytes. And I think currently we're about 13 petabytes. But the key there isn't that we're protecting more and more of the data. The key there is that they've realized that once they have the data uh, into the OCI environment, they can then take that and use that data to do other things. So they can they can make access to other parts of the organization with that. So they're getting a lot of flexibility, agility on how they use their data, and they're receiving uh, direct business benefits as, along the way, is that correct? That's correct, and they're only paying for what they consume. I understand this is a large pharmaceutical company. Are there special challenges or even opportunities for pharmaceutical and healthcare companies that they can accrue with this OCI approach? Um, there is. I mean, the, the the biggest expenditure for a pharmaceutical is they spend somewhere between 15 and 25 percent of their revenue in R&D. That's a tremendous amount of spending that, that leads all industries. And the reason that they spend so much is that they have this enormous funnel of drugs that they go out and, and they, they, they test. Um, and they put through the clinical trials. So they narrow it down, narrow it down, and only a few hundred go through clinical trials, and then maybe two or three come out the other end uh, and are actually marketed. If we can take the number of those um, uh, drugs that they test and eliminate um, some of them from the data analysis, and then also shrink the time that, um, that they go through that funnel, we're not talking about a few million dollars, we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. So that's the real monetization of the data, is using that for a business case like that. So using data protection, disaster recovery strategies have traditionally been thought of as regulatory compliance, but that's you're right. talking about fundamental benefit of business. That's correct, once you have the data in a place that's secure, what are you gonna do with it? Ignacio, how does someone get started with OCI? Well, typically with Oracle, the answer was call your Oracle rep. <laughs> but with OCI, we're very transparent. 
Incredibly so, in fact. Um, all of our pricing, all of our uh, information is all online. You can go to cloud.oracle.com. You can go in, you can put in your requirements, how many databases you want to protect, how many you know, um, workloads, uh, what the data sets are, um, what compute instances you want to stand up, any of that. You can put all that in. Um, you put in how many years you want to sign up for, months, whatever it is. Or if you just want to go pay as you go, it'll do the calculation. It'll build it out. It'll give you a bill of materials. Um, you can download into Excel, into uh, into a PDF. We don't ask anything for uh, for that. We don't ask you to put in your email address. We don't ask you to uh, verify anything. Anyone can do that. You can do that. I can do that. Our, our competitors can do that. So we try to be very very transparent. We're not your grandparents' oracle. Um, anyone can do that. In addition, we also have. Um, it's important for an enterprise. It's important for an enterprise to know the status of the environment in which they're relying on. So we publish a website called OCIStatus.com, and it's very simple. It gives you real time, to the second, updates on what is going on in an entire worldwide environment. So all of North America, or Europe, or Asia Pac, uh, all of the environments are on there. You can go to the upper right hand corner, you can put in a telephone number or your email address, um, and you'll get alerts, real-time alerts, when something is, is, is happening, whether it's a minor issue, a critical issue, when the root cause. Um, and again, anyone can do that. I subscribe to those alerts. It's nice to see the worldwide perspective. It, it, is, it is great, and, and we, we, we understand the transparency is what's required in public cloud, and the more information we can put in the hands of not just our customers, but our prospective customers, the better off we all are. Well, thank you, Ignacio. We appreciate your insight and teaching us about Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. It was a pleasure talking to you. Well, thank you. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us today. We appreciate your interest. We hope that whenever you think about data protection, disaster recovery, and really using your data, you will think of enterprise Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Thank you.